Morning guys, welcome back to episode 4 of our Stalking Shadows with myself Wayne Dell and yeah it's just an outfitter's story of where we started to where we are now um, with this beautiful beautiful sunrise happening behind us so I thought I'd get back onto the storytelling and let you guys know a little bit more about the Eastern Cape and the different experiences we um, get to to do here and are you know the Eastern Cape is so diverse guys we can we can hunt you in you know semi-desert right down to the coast thick bush valley you know coastal coastal thick bush right up into the mountain ranges and get you guys above 7,000 feet above sea level and it leads me on to my next story now of one of my favorite places to go and hunt and I st we started hunting there in our teens. Uh, my brother and I with a good friend of ours, Rowan Phillips. They've got a beautiful farm high up in, in you know, the Winterberg Mountains. And um, it's close to Tarkestat. It's about, I want to say, I think it's 180 kilometers from Gramstown to his property. And we started there um, when we were still at school. You know, he's a few years older than us. And we became great mates through hunting and being farm kids and, and just loving the outdoors. And he would invite us up there to come and hunt. And remember in the previous video, I told you guys about my old 303 that I was gifted by a friend and we sporterized it to hunt and stuff like that. So this takes me to one of my stories where we ended up there. It was the, the four of us hunting, my brother's there, another buddy was there and um, Rowan aka Bean and we got there all super stoked his father's allowed us to hunt mountain reedbuck it's the it's the end of the season and he'd had a couple of hunts coming through there so this is like getting into now where hunting uh with internationals and landowners allowing their properties to hunt with internationals and stuff like that is starting to from my side and my perspective is starting to actually really build through the Eastern Cape. And obviously being a teenager then, you you know, farmers are starting to be reluctant now to allow you to come and hunt because animals have got such high value to them. So they're keeping the animals for international clients. So your hunting areas are starting to get a bit squeezed um, for for internationals. They've got the, the free lib of it and, and, you know, farmers are making money out of game, which they never used to, which is great. So then you all of a sudden see the boom of the populations now and i think that's solely to do with putting value on those species where landowners are instead of just hammering them where they've got sheep cattle and and, and goats to keep the food for their for their stock they've got value in it now so they they're looking after them so we're getting better numbers so back to the story we end up in Tarkestan and um, there are four of us and there are these big mountains and his dad says, no, we can hunt mountain reedbuck um, rams. We must make sure, we can shoot any, but preferably he'd want some ram shot. And he he, he showed us a mountain and, and the way we did it, he said, you can shoot what you want. As long as you yourself carries it out, there's no staff to help you. So... The way it works is he puts your name, he puts a number in a hat and he gets the hat there and there are four of us and number one, two, three and four is popped in the hat. Number one is the gentleman who has to walk to the top of the mountain. Number four is the gentleman who's at the bottom. So you kind of drive these hills by yourself walking in a row with your buddies. 
So what happens is we end up with, everyone puts their hand in. My brother grabs number one. <laughs> I think I ended up with number three. And then there was a guy below me and then my buddy was in between us. Or Bean, he was, he was number two. So we start our walk up and we get to the top of the hill like this. And we shout to each other. We're all in a line. And this is, this is Targeston Mountains, guys. There's no trees in this place. It's literally these big grass mountain slopes. And you've got to just walk in a line slowly, keeping an eye, and then we'd hunt forward. So, you know, slow walk, walk and drive or walk and stalk, if you want to call it. And normally the guy at the top starts shooting before you and then everything runs down and, and you guys get opportunities as you go along. So my buddy opens up the account and he gets his first mountain reed buck. They run out in front of us and you're shooting with his 308 and he gets lucky. So the rule was if you shot something, you'd grab it and you'd walk it down, you'd carry it down to the fence and then everyone would shuffle up one. And you'd carry on doing this this cycle as you hunt these mountain slopes as you went around. But what my buddy's father didn't realize is my brother and I are quite capable of packing stuff out of the bush already at this stage. So we realized that we could shoot three before we could move our spots. <clears throat> so then my brother, he's got a pump action 306 Remington that he just purchased. And we'd set it, set it up with an old Nicker Sterling scope. 4x32 scope and we just sighted it in the day before and we were up there and man he had a whale of a time man first one second one third one so the first one he turned into a knapsack put it on his back and then he dragged the other one and then when he got to see his third one he just dropped that one went down shoot the third one and then he's got his rifle and he's got two in each hand and one on his back and down he went my luck wasn't so so good i kept on um, missing, 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 and eventually I couldn't shoot anything. I couldn't understand why I wasn't hitting anything. And I'm shooting with this old 303 of mine, and to realize that I'd created a habit of flinching, and I, I'd started rushing my shots, pulling my shots, and I was flinching really badly because this old 303 was kicking the living bejesus out of me. And what we what had happened was I'd got a guy to do some reloading for me and he reloaded some ammo for me, but unbeknown to me, he had, he had like overcharged these rounds and it actually had caused some damage on my rifle. It had an old Parker Hale base plate that you fit on the old 303. And the recoil was so extreme now that it was, it actually had broken the stud that holds the, the, the ring to the base plate. And that's why I was missing. Because now my rifle was out after five shots and I'm flinching. So I had a really rough day and shot nothing that first day. And then my brother had shot a couple. Um, I think I might have got one by luck. It was like a wounded, a wounded one and we chased it down and I got it by luck. But by the time we got back um, that afternoon, my dad was up there with us and he was like asking us how the hunt was going and everything. He was like, something that doesn't sound right yet. It's not, it's not like me to, to miss so, so badly and miss such easy shots and waste so much ammo. So he took me to the shooting range and we sat there, we put up a box and I shot with my rifle and it was nowhere. You know, prior to this, we tested everything just before we did our walk. So we knew the rifle was on, but then he was also watching me shoot and I was like cringing every time I pulled the trigger. So he said to me, he said, no, no, buddy, just pack that away. Take the old triple two that you accustomed to. And I grabbed that little Sacco triple two with its old weaver scope on it and off I went. Well, my luck changed. I went up on the mountain. My brother had finished shooting what he'd shot. Um, another buddy accompanied me to show me where to go. And we ended up on top of this mountain with this long funneling valley, valley all the way down. And about six or eight mountain rebuck popped up. And I got down on my butt, set myself up on my elbows and my knees, and I made two beautiful shots. I shot two mountain reed buck within a matter of minutes with that little triple two. And it just goes to show that when something's going wrong, guys, there is there is a reason for it. You need to you need to look, especially with hunting, especially if you know your equipment and you're hunting enough and and you know. Don't get into that mindset of like, oh, I can't, I can't figure it out. And just having my dad's experience there with us that trip and looking over my rifle, realizing, hey, there's an issue here. Pack that away. 
Take something that you're confident with, which gives you confidence again. You know your, your mind's, can't, you, th this rifle, you can shoot anything with it. It's super accurate. And, and that was just a great learning experience there again um, from generations, hunters that have done it before. And um, I'll never forget it. It's just been one of the best trips. You know, we, I think we also at that time, we were probably 16, 17 years old now. And just climbing those high altitude mountains, hunting something completely different to what we were used to and gaining that experience from making friends with other out, um, hunters who have got the property and the terrain and, in, and still willing to invite friends over to do a hunt. So that's definitely a highlight in my, in my hunting career and learning how to hunt mountain reed buck. And that was the other thing that one thing I'll never forget is my buddy's dad said, guys, always remember one thing, dead meat doesn't bruise. Again, we weren't hunting for trophies. We were shooting just for meat. So we, we also got clever. You could shoot, it's downhill. We got to get to the bottom. You just toss the bucket, rolls to the bottom, grab it and off you keep going again until you get to the bottom, gut it all out, pack it out and, and, and load it up on the truck. So we learned a lot and, and, it's great to be part of a community and learning from the older generation. Guys have been there and done it. You know, we are hunting now. Hunting styles are way more modern um, and things have changed. Like I said, now we're getting into the stage where hunting is becoming commercial. There are lots of game farms and game fences going up. Landowners are holding on to their game. So it's, it's very difficult to find hunting areas for the run of the mill fridge hunter or you know biltong hunter as we call them in south africa where you shooting to f fill your freezer for the season so yeah things were changing and it was just great to get out there knowing that we've still got people who, who were willing to allow this and yeah it's it's just something that we've learned in south africa now south africans have become accustomed to going out and paying for animals like everyone else where prior it was people gave you animals you know you came out and shot a springbuck on this guy's farm a kudu on this guy and you get a get something or the landowner would allow you to come out and hunt and you'd split a kudu um unfortunately and sadly those aren't the ways of of today now because everything has value but value isn't a bad thing guys it, it's it's a great thing because what has happened is creating value to species and to animals has really really boosted our game population that is that is just absolute absolute fact guys you put value towards something people protect it people look after it and that is definitely one of the biggest blessings when with the hunting industry yeah a lot of people get upset about it but it does create better production better animals better genetics guys are really going out there and, and investing in the industry so Till later, guys, I'm going to leave it for there. Let you guys think about it. If you like what we're doing and you like our videos, hit that like and subscribe button. Get, get in contact with us. Drop us a message in the comments and let us know what you want to find out more. Leave us questions. Guys, I'm, I'm happy to answer anything and everything that you guys are wanting to know about hunting in South Africa and hunting foremostly in the Eastern Cape because that's where we're based. Check out beautiful sunrise, guys. So, till later. Cheers.